this week's feast. Queen Moon's Butterfly Pie from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. It's summertime, and it's a great time to eat pies. And make them. <laughs> Summer fresh fruits. Fresh fruits. And berries. Ice cream. Ugh. Fireworks. Yes. When I was young and it was summertime, we would always go on and pick out blackberries from the bushes around our like house Wait, in, in is Seattle. This pre you're allergic? Yes. At a certain point I also became allergic to blackberries. So that's why you'll find no blackberries in today's recipe. Yep, we made it Jimmy safe. Jimmy safe. No milk either apparently. What happens if you do eat them? Yeah, I puff up, I get hives, it gets hard to breathe, everything gets oh, really no. scratchy. So it's actually very dangerous for you me. You know, if it wasn't dangerous, that would be really funny. Yeah, just to send me through the thrones of, yeah, very, very funny. I said if it wasn't dangerous. And of course, each one of these episodes is brought to you by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com slash Feast of Fiction, and we shout out one special person each week. So, this episode is dedicated to... Who's that patron? It's Drukara! Drukara! Join us over at the Patreon. You can help us decide what recipes we make on the show, see some awesome behind-the-scenes footage, and all that good stuff. But I think it's time, Ashley, that we make this pie. Summertime is here, and what better way to celebrate than with a medley of fresh fruits and a pie? One that just happens to look exactly like Queen Moon's Butterfly Pie from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Start by chopping up your strawberries, and measure out your raspberries and blueberries. Add these all to a mixing bowl and coat with sugar and cornstarch. Once these are thoroughly mixed together, add lemon juice, cinnamon, and a little vanilla extract and keep carefully stirring until your ingredients are completely coated. Be careful so your fruit doesn't get completely mushed up during this step. In a pie tin, add a crust to the bottom and carefully layer your fruit mixture on the inside. We advise you drain some of the liquid from the fruit in the beginning before putting it inside the pie tin. Once you're totally filled up, unfold another pie crust on top and work your way around the edges pinching the two crusts together. Once that's done, take the excess over the edge and fold it underneath and tuck it into the pie tin. There are tons of ways to design a crust and the method we used is super easy and looks really great. Using one thumb, press down on the outside of the crust while using your index finger and thumb on the other hand to hold the edge. Keep doing this all the way around until you've completely circled the pie tin. Look how great that looks. Give the entire pie an egg wash and using a knife or a sharp utensil, cut small slits around the circumference just like it looks like in the show. Place this in the oven and bake for 50 minutes to an hour. In the meantime, roll out another pie crust into a long skinny log and carefully twist it around into a butterfly shape with an antenna. Set this aside. Once the crust starts to become golden brown, remove the pie from the oven, give it another egg wash and place your butterfly on top with its antenna, give that another egg wash and put it back into the oven for another 20 minutes of baking. And voila, look at this golden brown delicious pie with a splash of color of the berry mixture peeking through the crust. This recipe is a picture perfect recreation of the pie that we see in Star vs. the Forces of Evil and guaranteed will catch the eye of everyone in the room. So slice it up and eat away. Fruit yes. pie. I lost some Mmm. Mm. I mean, mm. this is delicious and it doesn't kill me. Pretty good, but it's missing one thing. Ice cream? Vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Your favorite. I know. Well, I thought vanilla ice cream was boring. It is, until it's put on top of a cobbler or a berry pie. Then it's legit. Really? So are you saying vanilla ice cream is so boring that it has to have something else amazing on top of it to make it better? Well, I didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> but, uh, vanilla ice cream is what should top this thing off for sure. It is one thing that could top it off. You know what would also be good? Vanilla ice cream just by itself. Just stand alone. <laughs> or maybe strawberry or maybe or even chocolate. Maybe Neapolitan. Maybe Neapolitan is the greatest ice cream flavor ever made. We know you don't really think that. But we want to know what you guys think of this pie. Yes. Or any other other recipes you've seen on this channel that you have made. <laughs> Just if you've ever had a comment about any recipe, now is the time to let Just us know. Just leave it think. in yeah. the more info blocks. Box. <laughs> I like more info blocks. It's like Minecraft. Yeah, you know. Let us know what you think about this recipe or if you make it for your family or for your friends or for that cool summer gathering that you're mm, going to. This to impress is like the, the lady perfect. slash guy. I know. This is like the perfect thing to make. Yeah. We literally are doing all the work for you and mm. showing you the best dish to make the next time you want to impress that certain someone. That lucky, lucky person. Well, here's the thing. It's a nice, easy recipe to do. Buying pie crusts, it's the best life hack when it comes to baking. You can make it yourself. 
Yes. But no one's going to know. And sure, you could wear that badge on your sleeve. Do it once, do it twice, do it a few times, but you don't have to do it every time. Or if you want to, feel free to swap that out for this pre made crust. We did the pre made crust, but obviously, if you have a really cool pie crust recipe that you love that's your go to, then use that crust instead because yeah. obviously, homemade is always probably better. And well, best. it's, it's but, better, yeah, it's less processed. And we've done it on the show before. And, and you can check out we those have recipes. a really cool pie crust recipe coming out in the cookbook. That's right. If you didn't so. know, a cookbook, a Feast of Fiction official cookbook here in the Fiction Kitchen, everything you need and more to throw the ultimate dinner slash any kind of party, pop culture relevant. Yep. It's coming out next year, 2020. All right, well, that just about wraps things up for this episode of the Feast of Fiction. We hope you enjoyed it. And as always, let us know in the comments below what you want to see us make next. That's right. Don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends about the show, and of course, keep watching awesome cartoons and keep hoping they make awesome foods for us to make as well. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.